everybody. In this video, I want to talk about anarchy. Uh, because there's some anarchists out there. And uh, basically, I want to share some points that I've realized in regards to anarchy. Um, with all of you anarchists out there. So, uh, some perspectives to consider. Um, in my experience, when I first heard of anarchy, I was maybe in my teens, you know, 14 or so, in high school. And, uh, this was in the 90s, mid to late 90s. And, um, you know, so the, uh, you know, what I heard about it was basically the fundamental point, very simplistic, which is, it's like the belief in no rules. Um, you know, the belief that rules aren't necessary, um, and we should just, you know, be able to live without any rules. And... At the time, this sounded really cool to me, because uh, on a fundamental level, I really thought that, I really understood that point of, we should be able to exist without rules. You know, why can't we exist without rules? Um, you know, from a perspective of, aren't we able to conduct ourselves in a way to get along without needing rules? I mean, you know, when you really look at it, it's like, really silly to need rules. Um, but, and then from another side of it, I liked it because, um, from a perspective of, like, a polarity reaction to all the rules that I had been pushed on me, uh, throughout my life, because we do have a lot of rules, and a lot of them are, uh, you know, not necessarily rules that are really necessary, but it's like stuff you have to follow just because that's what, how the rules are made. And a lot of it has to revolve, do, revolve around money. Like, it, it has to do with making money. Um, you know, for example, like, traffic violations and things. I mean, the premise is supposed to be, you know, you're being pulled over and punished so that you'll drive better and safer. But, you know, there's it's not actually the reason for it. The reason for it is actually to generate revenues uh, because they just simply, it's simply a reason to charge you money. And um, it's not an effect. I mean, maybe it's thought and believed that it's supposed to help people drive better. And, you know, to a certain extent, perhaps it does because you're going to simply not do things because you're fearing the cost that it might cost you but you know in terms of actually really learning something and understanding the benefits to behaving a certain way or not behaving a certain way um, you know to have to be fined money really is totally irrelevant and doesn't actually teach an individual or show an individual a practical reason or a practical example of why to behave or not to behave a certain way so it doesn't actually really help or assist people to drive any better. It just assists, it just, uh, you know, makes you want to try and avoid punishment. Um, you know, and that's not, that wasn't the point. The point wasn't to get you to avoid punishment. It was to get you to uh, behave in such a way that is not harming anyone. And... Um, so, basically, you know, we have so many rules, and, and uh, you know, probably a lot of people maybe grew up with parents who, uh, you know, have a lot of fear, because there's a extensive amount of fear in this current system, because the way it operates, you know, it's like we're all, I mean, basically you have a few people that have, like, all the money, and everybody else, all the rest of us, has to try and get those people to give us money so that we can live. And we all have to compete amongst each other to try and, you know, get this money. And so, within that, it's like, it's like a, you know, a man-eat-man -man world, you know, where we're actually 
pitted against one another and we're actually in competition with one another so it's like impossible to trust each other or you know really have actual real relationships and so parents I mean parents when they have children it's like you know on some level the kind of world that your child is being born into and that there's not really a whole lot you can do necessarily to protect them and like some parents will go into like an overprotective mode where they'll be really strict and you know all from that point of fear of trying to protect their child and so then you you know the child then gets kind of stifled by this overbearing of these rules so and such was my experience so when I came across this idea of anarchy I was like fuck yeah no rules man I'm sick and tired of rules um so part of it was like this polarity reaction to having had so many rules now I just wanted to not have any rules and be free la 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 you know an idea which is actually promulgated by parents as well because parents you know will often have the attitude of like you're a child you should play 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 now while you can you know I mean they'll even say things like that like you know get it do this while you can or while you're young you know enjoy this while you're young while it lasts uh, because they know that you're uh, eventually gonna have to you know go into the system as a slave to the system so it's like have your fun now while you can while you're a child because it's all shit you know all downhill from there so um so you you're like shown this idea that you should really just want to play 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 and that you know you're but unfortunately you're gonna have to be shackled by the system and you know bogged down and slaved so it's kind of like creates this point within you of um like wanting to rebel because you feel trapped you know and so the idea of anarchy you know um like I saw it from that perspective also of like I just wanted to not have fucking rules anymore and I just wanted to be able to play and enjoy myself and um but you know so uh, looking at you know considering uh the situation we're in here we're in we have lots and lots of beings all living in the same world together now if you take that idea or ideal of you know, just having no rules and doing whatever you want, you know, and, you know, you, it's pretty obvious that the world would be pretty much a mess. I mean, not that it's not now, but, you know, it would be just as bad, if not worse, um, you know, because people would just be, you know, doing whatever the fuck they want. I mean, that's basically why we came up with rules, was because, you know, uh, we were hurting each other in really grotesque ways. I mean, we still are, extensively so, and it happens more now than it ever has, in fact. Um, <laughs> so it's like the rules obviously haven't solved anything. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, but that is the reason that we came up with the rules, is so that, you know, some of us, and then, I mean, those of us that have money, I mean, countries like the countries that have money and can afford police and military and such are able to actually enforce laws um you know like there's a lot of places uh where they don't have the means to enforce the laws and it's like what can you really do um and so you know in the places where we have the money the rules work to an extent uh, because we're able to actually enforce them. And, uh, you know, if we didn't have those rules, we would be worse. Um, but it's not that rules are a solution at all. They're just what we did, uh, you know, as, as like a total backwards way of, of, you know, trying to correct our behavior. Because it doesn't correct our behavior, it actually just accepts our behavior the way it is accepts it as, like, ingrained, and, um, therefore, it's like we're always trying to plug up a, a never-ending leaking dam, you know, um, or trying to, like, 
you know, bail out a boat that the water keeps coming into, you know, without actually plugging the leak, you know, um, act without actually addressing the actual cause. So, um, you know, but the idea or the principle that we should be able to exist without rules makes total sense. Um, but however, when you look at the context of how we're currently existing, it can't happen. It's, I mean, it's not here. It's not here yet. And it's a very, um, like, specific process we have to go through to get to the point where we could actually live without laws in a way that's not going to be harmful to anyone. And that requires us to change. That requires self-change for each individual to change and to live in such a way that is not harming anyone. And, you know, short of that happening, we can't not have rules, you know, without severe consequences. Um, so it's like, you know, uh, so, to, so to all those anarchists out there that are maybe not considering that point, like I hadn't considered it when I first looked at the idea of anarchy, and I just thought, yeah, we should just have no rules, you know, and, like, it would, it was a point that I felt like, oh, I'll stand for that, I'll stand for just not having any rules, but I wasn't taking, you know, the practical considerations, um, into consideration of what does the, what's the human currently existing like, you know, and currently it is not something that can exist without rules. We have to actually change to be that way. We actually have to change to beings that can be here and live with each other in ways that is not harming each other. And unless we can do that, then, um, you know, rules is going to be the best we can do. Um, so, you know, for those who are anarchists, if you're a real anarchist, if you're actually a real anarchist, um, and you actually really, you know, see that common sense point of that we shouldn't need rules, then the key point is to start with self and make sure you are standing and living in a way that's not harming anyone and support others to do the same as well. And that's exactly what we're doing at Destiny. So you can join us at Destiny, um, where, you know, you can say that we are real anarchists because we are taking the practical necessary steps and supporting everyone equally in the practical necessary steps to get to a point where we don't need rules. Because we shouldn't have rules. We should be able to behave ourselves, <laughs> you know, and be here um, without harming each other, and be able to enjoy ourselves, uh, you know, because while we're spending time harming each other, it's time that we could be spending enjoying ourselves, but we're not, so it doesn't make any sense, um, and it makes all the sense to, you know, correct self, and to be able to stand as what's best for all in every way, uh, because what's best for all is what's best for you, because you are part of the all. You know, one and equal. So, uh, you know, so that's some practical considerations for all the anarchists out there to have a look at um, and consider to make sure that you are, like, you know, effectively aligned with that point um, to actually stand as, you know, real anarchy and um, working, to actually working towards the, you know, taking the practical steps required to get to a point of no rules. So, uh, because obviously that would be great to, uh, live here with no rules, because the rules, you know, are just a system, and it's not living, it's not a living thing, it's just a system, and it's like, so it's just cold and calculated, so to speak, you know, and it just, um, it doesn't, you know, it has no mercy, or, you know, it has, uh, if it makes a mistake, or, you know, and it can be used to abuse, the system is greatly used to, to abuse, so basically, you know, the only way out of that is if we stand up and 
uh, correct our own behavior and have no mercy on ourselves within that until um, we stand here as uh, you know life in all ways that's able to direct ourselves and not require a system of rules thanks <laughs>